Lucy begins her narration by stating that life began billions of years ago, then wonders what humans have done with it since. Lucy, a young American woman, stands outside a hotel in Taiwan with her week-long lover, Richard. He instructs her to take a briefcase up to Mr. Jang's room. Lucy refuses, so he binds her wrists to the briefcase handle, leaving her no choice. She enters the lobby and tells the receptionist that Richard is sending her up to Mr. Jang, nervously giving her name. Lucy glances out the window and sees Richard smiling and trying to be encouraging until he is fatally shot. A gang of thugs emerges from the elevator and forces Lucy to accompany them. This moment is paired with footage of a cheetah chasing, mauling, and carrying the carcass of a gazelle between its teeth. They drive Lucy to Jang's place, where she vomits upon seeing bloody bodies on the floor. Jang dials a number, asks a man to interpret for Lucy, and scribbles the code for opening the briefcase, 140, on a scrap of paper. Lucy opens the briefcase to reveal four one-kilogram packets of blue powdered crystals. She is subsequently assigned a task, which she refuses to undertake until she's smacked. Lucy awakens in a motel room with her stomach wrapped in a bandage. Jang's men walk in and toss some clothing on her. She is led to Jang with three other men. A British man known as the Limey enters to inform Lucy that she and the other males have had a substance called CPH4 injected into their lower intestines. The drug is expected to be the next big thing on the market, and they plan to smuggle it worldwide. Lucy is then taken to a room and locked up, where one of the thugs tries to assault her before kicking her in the stomach, right where they had made the incision. This tears the medication bag, allowing the powder to enter Lucy's system. She begins to writhe and thrash all over the room, even reaching for the ceiling before collapsing to the floor. Meanwhile, we see Professor Samuel Norman delivering a lecture about his study on the potential of the brain. He outlines what could happen if people could exceed the recommended 10% brain capacity, including the brain's responses to situations that could lead to either immortality or reproduction. Essentially, if the subject dislikes their surroundings, they'll choose immortality and relocate. However, if their content, they'll be more likely to reproduce, shown with images of various species engaging in sex. If humans could reach 40% brain capacity, they could alter reality. Lucy reawakens, her eyes flashing a brilliant blue. She sits up, straighter and calmer than before. When a gangster enters the room, Lucy tempts him by spreading her legs. The thug smiles and sets his gun down on the table. Lucy grabs his belt, shoots him, and then kills the other goons while they're eating. After freeing herself, she is shot in the shoulder, yet she extracts the bullet without experiencing any pain. She consumes all the thug's meals before departing and goes to the hospital. Her senses are heightened, and she can hear people's voices from outside the car. When she arrives at the hospital, she can read the signs as if they were written in English. She enters an operating room, shoots the patient because he wouldn't survive anyway, and coerces the physicians into removing the bag from her stomach. Lucy then contacts her mother to share all the details of how she feels. The doctor extracts the bag of medications from Lucy's stomach. After Lucy informs him it's CPH4, he tells her that it's something pregnant women produce six weeks into their pregnancy as nutrition for the fetus. The doctor is shocked that Lucy has survived this long with it in her body. Lucy returns to the hotel to locate Jang, murdering his bodyguards before shooting his tattoo artist away and inserting knives into both of Jang's hands. She performs a Vulcan mind meld to see where the other three drug mules are going, using images of their plane tickets. Lucy goes to her friend Caroline's flat and reads all of Professor Norman's research in a fraction of a second, then phones him to inform him of what she's discovered. He is astounded to learn that she has read everything and is still conveying what she is feeling and experiencing now that she has attained 20% brain capacity. She can influence electronics, as evidenced by her appearance on Norman's hotel room TV, phone, and radio. Lucy's story about shooting the patient spreads, so she alters her hair color and style as she walks through the airport. She contacts Captain Pierre Del Rio, a French police officer, to alert him about the other drug mules. She then boards the plane and resumes her brain studies, typing furiously on her laptop. 
the flight attendants order Lucy to switch off her computer. Lucy requests a glass of champagne while instructing one of the flight attendants to clean her nose without looking, causing the attendant's nose to bleed. Lucy accepts the champagne glass and raises it in a toast to knowledge. She sips, and the words 40% appear on screen. She finds a tooth in her glass and spits up three additional teeth. Then, in full view of the passengers and flight attendants, her skin begins to dissolve. Lucy rushes to the restroom, where her fingers and face begin to melt. She takes the rest of the CPH-4 and snorts it, returning to normalcy before passing out. Lucy awakens in a hospital room with Del Rio and a few other officers and medics waiting for her. Shortly after, the other mules are captured. She sits up immediately, to the nurse's chagrin. Meanwhile, she, one of Jang's henchmen, arrives with more armed men to find the remaining mules. After killing them, they take the mules into a room and cut the drugs out of them. Lucy walks out of the room flanked by armed men, except for Del Rio. She can put them all to sleep with a wave of her fingertips. They discover Jang's men together, and with her brain function now at 60%, she maneuvers them through the hall and prevents she from fleeing with the briefcase full of drugs by erecting an invisible wall. She takes the medicines from Xi and prepares to flee, but instructs Del Rio to accompany her. He believes he is of little value to her, but she approaches him and kisses him, asking him to return as a reminder. Lucy utilizes her powers to find a new place, taking over Del Rio's car and driving maniacally through the streets despite never having driven before. Jang and she are following her. Lucy and Del Rio track down Norman and his colleagues at a university, where she begins to reveal what she's discovered. Her brain strength now exceeds that of a regular human being. While this is happening, Jang and his men infiltrate the location and begin firing. Lucy gives the remaining CPH-4 to the academics, who synthesize it into a liquid material that enters her circulation. Her brain function rises to 70%, and her hands begin to transform into a black, wormy ooze that hooks itself to the computers in the room, providing Lucy with additional energy from matter and thus an unbelievable amount of power. As her brain function improves, she manipulates matter in such a way that she appears to erase everything in the room, leaving the academic standing in white space before constructing some type of New Age supercomputer in front of their eyes. As Jang's men are being shot down by the police, he orders she to do something. She fires a rocket launcher into the room, transporting Lucy millions of kilometers to Times Square. With a sweep of her hand, she can change the course of time. She journeys backward in time from early 20th century New York through colonial days and even to ancient times to meet the protohuman from the opening scene. They touch fingers, transporting Lucy through the cosmos, all of space and time, and bestowing upon her endless and infinite power. Jang enters the room and raises his to Lucy's head. As she reaches 100% brain capacity, her body vanishes, leaving only her garments remaining. Jang fires his gun into the air. Del Rio enters the room and shoots Jang to death. The black matter in the room vanishes and transforms into a flash drive, which lands in Norman's hands, expanding and concluding his research. Del Rio inquires about Lucy's whereabouts. On his phone, he receives a message that reads, I am everywhere. The film finishes with an aerial image of Jang's body and Lucy's voice saying, this is what life can do.